everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hubler Auto Group Coach's Corner. It's been a while since we've been on here, so we're happy to be back. And I'm even happier that my co-host Brian Powers is back. I tell you, you looked a little bit nervous. and uh, Or not a little bit nervous, no. Lonely on trivia there without me. You know, what? once you get your team ready, whoever your team may be, we're going to keep that away from the fans. But once you get that ready, come in. Hey, we're just waiting on one person. Two of us, we're close. We can join whenever. There's the other one we're waiting for to come back. So we'll look forward to that in a few weeks. Look forward to embarrassing some people. All right. And not myself. But today we have someone we do not want to embarrass yet. Maybe in a little bit we will. Uh, we have with us FCHS drumline instructor, Mr. Jason Hammond Wood. Jason, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys both doing? Good. Doing pretty good. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Yep. So, the drum line uh, with the competitions you guys have had and the kind of the year you've had, just what, what are we looking forward to this weekend, I guess, first of all, and, and what have we been, how's the year been for you? Uh, I'll start with the first question there and um, what we're doing this weekend, we are actually hosting a second competition, um, helping out another program that wasn't able to actually host. So um, we were able to get the event here it's going to be a slightly bigger event in terms of number of units. Um, even though things have been looking better, we're still following all the same protocols. People have gotten used to that. Um, but uh, the kids obviously getting another opportunity to perform uh, on their home court, so to speak. Uh, should be a very good opportunity for them. Their whole production is out there, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so right now, we're focused on uh, the hype of the home show and just being really comfortable with our production. Um, this year's production, we, it's called uh, Living on the Edge, or I'm sorry, On the Edge, and it shows music from um, Aerosmith's Living on the Edge. Starts with the, the beginning, um, the lyrics on that song are something wrong with the world today. So we've, we've latched onto that and make the introduction um, a little dark in nature <clears throat> to match that lyric quality and then we take it into a second movement that's not Aerosmith that is uh, more lively. I always uh, equate it to being like you've uh, smacked the hornet's nest and the bees are all kind of like active. <laughs> uh, then we get to the closer that has the last half of the lyrics that's something right with the world today. Um, and like you want to live on that edge and explore that area. So um, we just put that out for the first time last weekend. This weekend's just going to be trying to like clarify things and like feel really good about what we're doing. So looking forward to that. So unlike uh, you know choir or other different sports, uh, mass is not as a as a negative thing for uh, you guys as is some other things. So what are some things uh, with COVID that have been uh, detrimental to what you guys are doing? Um, and I don't I know. Can't that, practice. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that anything was like. Uh, totally detrimental other than um, having less rehearsal time or practice time uh, to like negate that we actually started a couple weeks early mm -hmm. uh, and what I also tried to do was uh, incorporate uh, the virtual learning stuff so we have a Google classroom and if somebody were to quarantine or maybe they're just sick and uh, they would like to chime in to rehearsal we've tried to set up a, a Chromebook and um, they could just see what was going on and, and you know virtually participate so that way when they are back in they have a little bit more knowledge than what they had if they weren't there at all uh, so that has been helpful uh, there's been a lot of struggles trying to make that all happen as technology fails on us time to time um, but i would say that in a, a typical year we are a little bit further along than then so with less rehearsal time um, the whole situation of the virtual instruction and just how hard the kids are working it's turned out great so. when you plan one of these one of the your performances how far in advance do you start like are you are you looking ahead to next year already or or how's that work i like to put a season to bed so to speak before i'm like thinking about the next mm. one so um we're already talking about like marching band right now and what all that stuff is uh, so my focus will be there and then typically give myself a couple weeks of like um, decompressed time 
And uh, then over the summer, I'll start putting some items in the think tank. And I really like to know what my show's going to be when school starts. And then we start to really produce that and put it in production in uh, early October or late September, depending on the year. So you mentioned that last week you guys had a performance. Um, tell us how, in your opinion, that went and then uh, kind of the results you guys had. Yeah, so we ended up uh, uh, result-wise in fifth place out of 11 groups. Um, pretty good for us where we're at right now. Um, in our world, your trajectory can be different per group, so they're judging you on your like cleanliness that day. Um, if you're performing a slightly easier <coughs> show than another group, uh, you could be a little bit higher. Then the next weekend, as you get a little bit more polished, that can start to flip-flop, and we're hoping we're going to see a little bit of that. Um, Overall, it was our first time to leave the building as a group uh, since last year at this uh, same exact show. Um, the kids handled that all as well as they could. Uh, we were dealt a, a weird hand with a semi-trailer that almost, well, the truck almost broke down. The trailer arrived very late. Um, it sent me into a little bit of a, a frenzy thinking like, what do we do next? And the kids all like, stepped up to the plate and worked really fast and diligently and ended up not being a problem. Um, performance wise, they were also having some issues in the gym with the lights and it was kind of like a rave in there <laughs> as they were flickering from uh, random spots at random times. So that made it fun, I guess. So. <laughs> when we're talking about, about what's going on right now, the, the drum line, how does that differ from marching band? Uh, it's kind of an extension. Um, this is the 25th anniversary of the Indoor Percussion Association for Indiana. Um, when it started in its infancy, it was to um, kind of give that continuation for students. So after the marching band season's done, you're still working on those skills so that you're prepared for that next season. Um, it's sort of evolved for percussion and guard that it's now the opposite and that um, the indoor arena is like the pinnacle and marching band serves as your training ground to build up to that. Um, so when I'm thinking about what our, back to the last question you had asked about like, when am I thinking about the show design? Well, that stuff might happen late summer and all that, but in terms of the kids, when we get to auditions, I'm thinking about that right then. Like, what do I think the trajectory is for this kid based on their work ethic or what they're showing me today? Do I think they could do this in February? Uh, no, then maybe they're ready for this instrument and then they can continue to train for the following year and then be ready. And, you know, kids will always prove you wrong and like step up and like bust their butts. Um, but sometimes you nail it and you get it just right. So then when they are ready for that next moment, they're like hitting the ground full steam ahead. Uh, so. I'm starting that process in late April, early May with the students. So as you mentioned previously, um, the uh, event you had last week was the first time you had traveled since the same one last year. Mm -hmm. So as most of the spring events of last year got kind of canceled, how hard was it for you to um, lose that season and uh, know that your seniors had lost their season? That was very difficult. Um, I felt really bad for the, the seniors. Uh, we were having our most uh, successful year to date. Um, so we were really getting the buy-in and the like excitement of like what the season could be. And I was really looking forward to them for that like three years of hard work that they poured into that to finally pay off and then feel very proud of what they did. Um, and I think at the end of the day, they were still proud of everything, but they missed that last moment. Um, so in terms of how hard it's been, like this year I feel like has been harder on me because I'm trying to make sure we get that to them. Mm. Uh, I don't want these kids, whether they're a freshman or a senior, to miss out on that opportunity. Um, so trying to make sure we're wearing masks and like doing all the right things, um, that has been like in the forefront of my mind all the time. And, added extra stress to the teacher that maybe isn't necessary, but mm -hmm. just so that we can get to that end. Uh, and since things have been looking better overall, it's like, okay, maybe I can take a breath. We're going to get there. Uh, but that has been uh, a difficult path for sure, mm -hmm. uh, especially with like the way that fall went. We didn't get to really have a season. 
Um, just trying to build them up to this moment has been more difficult through that. When you talk about the importance of, or you know, just being at home and performing there, is that similar to just um, athletics where you are familiar with your surroundings? You know, okay, at this point when I move, this is what I'm going to be equal with, with when I start going the opposite direction, or is that, is that kind of how that is? Uh, it's not necessarily the same as that. Um, because just like a basketball court is the same, regardless where you're playing basketball, it's kind of like uh, the lead into that. So uh, I call it uh, the, like the belly of the beast. When uh, I'm at Lucas Oil Stadium doing some stuff there, I know everything around that stadium, not just the football field. And uh, when you enter this school and you know where everything is at, right. you don't really have to like think. You just go in autopilot. Yeah. You go into a new school, you don't know where the bathroom is, you don't know where the gym is or how to get where. So there's confusion and other thoughts in your head rather than like focusing on the task at hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so being on our home court has more to do with, one, uh, the community being able to come and watch, or two, um, just being comfortable in nature with through the whole day, so mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're really excited you guys are going to be able to have a season this year. Uh, you know, we're excited to see what you guys and hear what you guys uh, have for us in the coming weeks, especially here at home this weekend. So uh, we wish you and your team the best of luck. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Do you want to give, like, uh, just kind of general information on what's going on? And yeah. when, like, the times and everything when people can come out? And yeah. Um, we'll just get, like, let's just get the entire community to come in here. Yeah, we... Currently, are only allowing two tickets per student for events. Well, Shut you down. That's, but yeah. uh, thousands if, of people can stand outside. If you go to indianapercussion.org, uh, <laughs> you can find our event in the schedules, and we are doing a live feed. <laughs> so, um, for ten dollars, you can watch the live stream, <laughs> and you can watch the groups that are here all day. So, uh, right now, I think we're at thirty-five groups that are going to be here throughout the day. Uh, then starting at about 10 a.m. and ending at 9 p.m. So if you really want to watch drums all day, uh, you would have that opportunity to do so. Uh, I think that we perform at 3.15 or 3.30, somewhere in there. Schedule keeps altering on us a little bit. Um, then the following weekend, uh, you could continue with the same process in live stream. We do state prelims at Avon. And then the weekend after that is state finals at Ben Davis. Well... What I heard out of that was live stream. So you and I might have to get the headsets out and get Bust back at out, it. Start, yeah. Now okay. we know when the best time to perform is is going to be like 3.15 or 3.30 because yeah. the home team gets to choose. Yeah. So they don't want to go too late. They don't want to go too early. 3.15, that's the money spot. Yeah. All for right. Sure. Well, Mr. Herman, well, we appreciate you stopping by. Mr. Powers, it's always a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. I'm Thomas Crow, and this has been the Hubler Auto Group Coach's Corner. Hubler is proud to be the official sponsor of Franklin Athletics. Score massive savings on all your favorite brands. Plus, get our 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty included. For all auto needs, just click drivehubler.com. Let's go Grizzly Cubs!